My name is Kimberly Hilton and welcome to my studio. Today I'm going to be making a little mini um, watercolor plein air kit out for outdoor painting. And um, I wanted to um, let you all join in on the process of um, how I'm going to make this. I could have just made it and then told you about it, but maybe you want to see the whole process. So, um, and I'll just explain as I go. So, um, this is just a little Altoids tin. Um, I have saw a lot of people uh, making little art kits with Altoids tins. And so I thought I would make my own. And um, so I haven't finished it yet, but you can fit everything that you really need for a really super mini minimalistic kit in an Altoids tin, which is really cool. And they're really cheap and you can eat the, um, the mints. But um, these little uh, pans, um, don't have a magnet on them yet so um, what I'll probably end up doing and I'm not gonna do that on on camera right now because it will take too long but just cut out little strips of magnet and um, glue them to the back of those pans and then you know they won't slide around and this is just a little um, just a little charcoal pencil a pencil eraser a little sharpener and um, a sharpener eraser and a little guitar pick and uh, you, you could um, use this to um, scrape or as a painting knife um, scrape rocks or textures and trees and stuff like that or you could use a store card um, either one uh, would fit in there so um, and also the other thing that I was going to show you was um, this is a um, a paintbrush. <laughs> I had already cut it. I want it to fit in this box, and this um this did have a this was a gum a gum blocker size six paintbrush, and this is a Simply Simmons uh, number eight round. I've made one out of this before, um, and I just take pliers like this and um, cut off. I'll show you. I just wear safety glasses when you do this and be careful. But just cut off the tip and I'll just go ahead and show you. So I want it to be, I want it to fit inside this Altoids tin. So I'm just going to take these pliers and if you, if you have another way of cutting then go ahead and just, um, these are I think wire cutters and just Oh, definitely. <laughs> oh gosh, that flew across the room. Uh, definitely wear safety goggles when you do that, or and maybe even better do it outside. Um, but um, so here's here's that, and then um, all you'll do is um, take your pencil sharpener and um, I wish I could find my other one so I could show you but you just take your pencil sharpener and this this one's kind of fat so it's not going to fit in that little pencil sharpener you'll need the um, you'll need the bigger size pencil sharpener for to sharpen that or you could file if you want it to be smooth you could just file it with some sandpaper um, but so um, once it's filed down it'll fit in there better but I just wanted to show you that and um, the next thing I want to show you is um, this little idea that I had to hold the Altoids tin while you're painting so um, I like having like if I'm out hiking or walking or something and I, I want to um, paint it's nice to be able to hold your tools so that you can have a hand free to paint. So um, once you uh, sharpen your pencil I want to show you how uh, you could use it. So um, I couldn't find the one I already had sharpened but I'll just go ahead and show you this. This is a um, 
this is a paintbrush whose, um, you know, the the top of it has come in loose. So I just saved this and I sharpened, I sharpened the um, the tip to this paintbrush. And the cool thing about um, having having a, a sharpened piece of wood, you can use this um, to scratch in um, if you want to paint in, uh, say, this is just scrap paper, but if you want to paint like a tree, and then you want your tree to have texture, let that set for just a, just a little bit, and I'll show you how to put some texture in your tree. Or you can take this to pull out branches smaller branches you see that um, just um, make sure it's saturated with water before you start to paint because if it's not it's not going to paint it very well but um, it, it will make fine marks and then you could also um, just this is just um, a wash of paint uh, burnt sienna and ultramarine blue but you can use it to sign your painting. And a lot of times if you're signing with a brush, it, um, you know, sometimes it, it's hard to sign your name with the brush. And you, you just have to re-dip it as needed and go over it if you need to. But it's handy having something like this to make lines. You can make straight lines. You know, uh, you can draw with it. And um, you can also scratch in texture in your tree. You can make all kinds of um, marks with that. But anyway, um, this painting is not, I mean, this video is not just about that. I just wanted to show you um, why sharpening the back of your paintbrush is a good idea. But, um, so let me put this stuff away so I can show you how um, we're going to make this little artboard. Now this, um, artboard is just a thin piece of foam foam board uh, like a backing board or something or a presentation board I think you can get these um, as like um, presentation boards maybe and all I did so far was I just I just cut out a circle um, I used a, a bottle I was gonna put a medicine bottle down in in it and have um, actually that almost fits but um, it's too wobbly but like this is a Tylenol bottle but the medicine bottles have a bigger opening but then I got to thinking well maybe maybe I uh, rather use something else but um, I thought well you could put your thumb in here and you could hold it and then you can put your your um, palette on here, your small palette, and then you could either, your preference, take a, a clip and clip it on so it doesn't go anywhere. Or if you if you wanted to, you can put uh, put some Velcro. I like Velcro. I'm out of the strips. Like I love these these strips of Velcro. I have more heavy duty Velcro, but um, I don't really want to use it. Or you could put a magnet on it. There's multiple ways to... Um, there's multiple ways of attaching that. Um, that's your preference. Or you can um, put vel little Velcro dots on it. That will work too. I like having uh, Velcro. Um, my other piece of this rolled off a cliff when I was painting outdoors. <laughs> 
<laughs> I, I was left with it was a, a double water pot so what I did was um, I took the this was hard to get on anyway so what I did was I took this off of here and I put a one of these little duct tape uh, velcro um, dots on here and then you can put it on there and now you have a little water pot and you can get these on Amazon or like any like little craft store um, but I need to take this off before I do the tape I like wrapping these with packing tape to make them um, it, it makes them very sturdy um, and it also makes them waterproof this is one I use a lot with my outdoor painting kit um, but it doesn't have a hole in it and <laughs> so I just always try new things I don't know that's just how my mind works but this little dot you can add it or not but you could stick your you could stick your paintbrush in there and then you'll have your you'll have all your little uh, things right there um, to paint with so um, I'm just gonna show you how to wrap this up and um, oh here's another idea you could use one of these little medicine cups as a um, as a small water pot if you wanted to But I just um, take packing tape and I haven't really thought about how I'm going to go around that circle yet, but um, I just start on one side and start close to, to the end. Wrap it over, smooth it out, and then just do the other side. Um, if you go slow, you can smooth out any air bubbles. If you get air bubbles, you know, it's not going to be a big deal. But And uh, once again, I forgot to get my scissors, and I don't know where they are. So I'm going to have to use this knife, which doesn't cut as cleanly but um, and then I'm just going to continue wrapping it all the way what I'm going to do for this I'm going to go ahead and do it first what I'm going to do for this is um, go ahead and just wrap it like I'm wrapping the whole board and then I'll cut the circles out I think that would work and I just took one of these knobs and cut out those little um, little circles. This shouldn't take too long because it's a small board. I keep having <laughs> I keep having to brush um, cat hair off of here. My cat's been in the studio. Animals, they're hairy, but we love them. If you wanted to make this really, really nice and pretty, you could make, you could spend more time making cuts and stuff like this. But this is just a tool. I don't really, I don't really care how pretty it is as long as it's functional. I like to put more effort into my paintings than I do my tools. But I do, I do really enjoy um, making stuff like this. I think it's kind of fun being creative and coming up with new ways of doing things.
if um if you all uh make one of these or you find this interesting or useful um i'd love to hear some feedback so uh leave me a comment and let me know let me know what you think i'd be happy to um have the feedback Please be careful if you're, I, I recommend cutting it with scissors. I just didn't have my scissors handy. So, um, and the next thing I'll do is just take an extra piece. Let me go ahead and do that. Over each end here and just go about halfway and then um, overlap it there and then um, on this side do the same thing and we're almost done so um, if you don't want the holes in your board, you don't have to put holes in them. But now, I guess I'm just going to make this tape. Press it together so it kind of sticks together. And then I'm just going to cut into it. I'm cutting on a, um, a self-healing cutting mat. So, um, you know, it doesn't scratch your table that way. A lot of times I learn as I go. Um, I don't, sometimes I don't really have a plan on how I'm going to do it until I get into it and start doing it. If I sat and tried to plan everything out, I'd never get anything done. Sometimes it works and sometimes it don't. So, um, since that's already there, I don't know if I would have done this um, little paintbrush holder or not. It's kind of poking on this back side. Um, if I made another one, I might leave that off. But we'll see. So, yeah, that that's going to fit snugly. And then this is not very comfortable, so I probably would take some, some more tape and, um, and um, just go over the inside there. Or uh, Okay, so um, I can't find my, um, I was just going to use um, regular like scotch tape. To, to make that smooth but I can't find it so um, I'm trying to think I'll probably just try, try it with this and see if it works oh, that's not going to work very good unless I cut it smaller So, um, just go, this might be a little tedious, but if you just take and make some smaller strips like you <laughs> had, had, um, like regular tape, and then you can just overlap those rough areas till you get all the way around to the, um, That, that feels a lot better. I have masking tape somewhere. I just didn't think I would need it. So I didn't get it out. 
But yeah, that feels a lot better like that. So you can just put your thumb in there, stick that there. I need to attach a Velcro dot. Let me see where I want my this to be. So this is gonna be here. And then I'll put put that there or up here. A room for your thumb to be comfortable. Just figure out where you want your thumb to be. And then um, that's. Let me take that out. The best way to do this is to go ahead and put it on your thing and then put your thing where you want. And um, that's it. I'm, just, I'm not going to use the clip. The clip's just for demonstration. So, and once I get that sharpened down, it'll fit in there better. And everything is very small, compact, lightweight, or a little piece of watercolor paper. You could cut as many as you wanted down to size. So you could make some little mini landscapes. And I went ahead and covered all that with tape. And then um, I put some Velcro on the back of this. And um, so you can have that hanging open like that. And then you can have your um, paint paintbrush. You can put your paintbrush or your pencil there. Or you could actually, if you're just using small pots of water, you could um, use a water brush. These are very handy and compact. Um, so, but um, I wanted to make this even more compact. I had this idea so before I like tape everything down really good I want to show you um, how to make this board foldable so um, I want it to fold like this board this is my other travel board but it's bigger and it has velcro on it so I want it to fold out like this and have my little thumb holder on this side but if you're left-handed you might want to have your thumb holder on this side okay so um, make sure you figure out which hand you want to hold your um, your board in so um, I want it on this side so I want the crease to be on the back side so when it folds out it'll be like this Um, so what I'm going to do is um, turn this over and I'm just going to um, score into two um, middle ways of this so let me count the lines and see one two three four five six seven eight eight so um, the f four would be in the middle so I'm just going to line it up and I'm going to take this um, this uh, box cutter here and just cut into it a little bit but not all the way. Watch out for your fingers. And um, I'm just cutting through the top layer of that tape and just the top layer of that board. I don't want to cut all the way through. And now... Um, this board is it can fold okay so like that and then when you hold it open you'll need a clip probably to make it secure but um, so if you want to even make this kit even smaller to fit maybe in a you know like, like a large coat pocket that would probably work but um, there's one final thing you need to do um, to make this and I'm just going to um, take a clip and these clips work better here 
um, the, because they'll hold it up. And then take a piece of um, your tape while that's open. Take a piece of the tape and um, just go across that area in the middle and push it down good. Um, and once again, I forgot to get my scissors, so I'm going to have to turn this over and cut it off. Be careful how I cut it off here. Um, And then uh, once your tape is cut, just fold it over and press it good down into to that. And I need to cut this end off here. Cut away from yourself when you're cutting with this kind of knife. Be better if I opened it up. So just, um, you, you want it to be down in that crease, so when it opens, it will open flush. And then I'm just going to cut that excess off there, and then just push it over. Now, I have a folding board, and I can put my Altoids tin there, and, um, a little business card size piece of watercolor paper. Now this is just for super, super minimal painting. Um, if you want to have a larger sketchbook, that's fine. But, um, so, there you go. That's uh, everything you need to, um, oh, and the water pot and the paintbrush or you could put your pencil in there and you can just wet your paint with uh with the water and you can just paint whatever you want and um you can do like little mini landscapes If you have a water brush, you don't really need the water pot, but it, sometimes it's good just to uh, damp off and I don't have any water in that water pot. This is just for demonstration. But everything is just handheld. Oh, um, one thing I forgot to include, you might want to have a little, um, a little uh, sponge, put a little tiny sponge in your kit or a um, small piece of paper towel. It's always nice to have a paper towel to blot with. But that's it. So um, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, uh, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel. I'm always trying to think of new ways to do things and I'd be happy to have you. So thanks for watching and I hope you have a great day. Happy painting.